The 64th edition of the Caribbean Series will begin on Friday, January 28th. Six league champions from six different countries will be competing for seven days in the Dominican Republic. And on Friday, February 3rd, one of those teams will be crowned champion of the 2022 Caribbean Series. Here are the six teams. From the LPBP in Panama, better known as ProBase, Astronautas de los Santos making their first trip since 2019. From the LPB in Colombia, Caimanes de Barranquilla made their first appearance in the Caribbean Series last year. They'll make their second appearance this year. The LBPRC in Puerto Rico will be represented for the second straight year by Criollos de Caguas. It was their 20th LBPRC title. They are five-time Caribbean Series champions, most recently winning it in 2017 and 2018. The last two Caribbean Series were won by a team from the Dominican Republic's Lido. This year it will be represented by a different team, Gigantes del Cibao. This is only the second time in that team's 27-year history playing in the Caribbean Series. Last time was in 2015, and they've never won it. From the LMP in Mexico, Charros de Jalisco, like the last team I mentioned, is making just their second appearance. Last time was in 2019. And from the LVBP in Venezuela, Navigantes del Magallanes is appearing for the first time since 2014. They haven't won it since 1979. If you haven't been following all these leagues this winter, that is a lot of baseball to follow, let me give you a quick recap of the season so you can see how each team got here. We'll look at what each team is bringing to the series, and finally, I'll try to guess the order of their finish. Link in the description for my previews of the Caribbean series the past two years. You'll see that I've been able to make fairly accurate predictions for this event, much better than my MLB postseason predictions. But you might be even better at it than me. Leave a comment letting us know what order you think they'll finish in, or at least just who you think is going to win it all. Anyway, let's start in the smallest league, that is Panama's Pro Base. This league didn't get its regular season started till a week into December, the last of these six leagues to get underway. Four weeks later, their 21-game regular season schedule was complete. Here is what it looked like. Astronautas de los Santos won by a comfortable margin with a record of 16-5. Federales de Chiriqui was 12-9, and, and Aguilas Metropolitanas were way back. A best-of-five series was scheduled between Astronautas and Federales, but three games were all that was needed. Astronautas won by the scores of 4-1, 9-3, and 6-5. They were not a strong hitting team. Some of their best hitters include 41-year-old Dominican Omo Rosario, who spent last summer in Mexico and last winter in Venezuela. He led the team in batting and slugging. Johnny Santos, an Oakland A's double-A prospect, was the team's on-base leader. But their best hitter right now is Cuban Lisbon Correa. He joined the team late. In the three-game championship series, he had a 643 on on-base percentage and a 700 slugging. Correa led the Cuban League in home runs last year and played in Mexico last summer. And they've added the league MVP for the series. Joe DeLuca is now with the team after leading the league in home runs, slugging, and OPS during the regular season with Federalis. Astronautas were better known for their pitching. Three good starting pitchers they can use. Eduardo Rivera had a 121 ERA in five starts, 22 innings. Harold Arauz had a 2.46 ERA in four starts, 22 innings. Left-hander Davis Romero's ERA was 2.55 in five starts, 24 and two-thirds innings. Romero pitched for the Toronto Blue Jays way back in 2006. They've got three relievers who threw four innings without surrendering a run, but the rest of their bullpen looks disastrous, so it's very important that they don't have to go too deep into their bullpen. This was easily the best team in Panama this year. If they're going to win in the Caribbean Series, they'll need to get the most from their starting pitchers and try to win low-scoring games. Colombia's LPB began playing in mid-November, and after a 36-game regular season, Caimanes were at the top, one game ahead of Vaqueros de Monteria. In the three-team round robin, Vaqueros finished at the top, one game ahead of Caimanes. In the championship series, Vaqueros took game one, but Caimanes won the next four, winning the series four games to one. Plenty of good hitters in their lineup. Harold Ramirez was the league leader in hits and slugging, second in home runs and doubles, third in batting and on-base percentage. Carlos Arroyo was second in batting, second in hits. Robinson Cabrera was second in slugging, fourth in doubles, fifth in batting. Pitching is good too. Eduard Lopez started 10 games through 53 innings, ERA 357, and a perfect 5-0 record. Elkin Alcala is another reliable starter. He threw 50 innings and 9 starts, ERA a league-leading 142. Porfilio Lopez, 7 starts, 37 innings, ERA 316. Those three were all in the top five of the league in ERA. And closer David Mendez tied for the league lead in saves while posting a 0.96 ERA. This will be the third time a team from Colombia competes in the Caribbean Series. Vaqueros went winless in 2020. Caimanes went winless last year, but they didn't lose badly. And with a good balance of hitting and pitching, this team seems like the right one to represent Colombia. The LBPRC in Puerto Rico started in early November, and the five teams played a 32-game schedule. The regular season standings were led by Indios de Mayagüez, with Criollos close behind. 
The top four made the semifinals where Indios won in five and Criollos won in six. In the final series, Criollos surprisingly was able to win it in five games, though three of their four wins were by one run. The league's top performers were all members of Indios. Criollos were the second highest scoring team and the top base stealing team. During the regular season, Janeshwi Fargus, who played for the Cubs and Mets last summer, hit 286, 369, 400, and led the league with 11 stolen bases. In Game 5 of the final series, he hit the go-ahead RBI double. Enhel Beltre joined the team late, but he's been a big contributor, going 5 for 12 with the home run in the regular season. And in four games in the final series, he went 6 for 13 with two walks, a double, and a home run. Infielder David Vidal joined the team for the final series. He did not have a good regular season playing for Cangrejeros, but in the final series he had a 1.039 OPS, which earned him the series MVP award. The season MVP award went to Danny Ortiz of Indios, who led the league in home runs, RBI, and slugging. He has joined Criollos for the Caribbean series. Also switching from Indios to Criollos for this event is Brett Rodriguez, the league leader in on-base percentage, second in batting and OPS. They were an average pitching team, mostly relying on their bullpen. Ricardo Gomez had a 0.90 ERA in 19 appearances and a league-leading 9 saves. Julio Morales made 16 appearances, 21 innings, a 2.57 ERA, and a perfect record of 5-0. Cristian Torres appeared 21 times, ERA 2.38. So you would expect this team to pull their starters early and use a variety of relievers. But they've picked up the league's best pitcher for this series, another Indios to Criollo switch, Eric Stout, who led the league with a 124 ERA in six starts. Criollos were the Caribbean Series runner-up last year, so they know how to win in this event, and some late additions to their roster make this look like an LBPRC all-star team, definitely a team capable of winning it all. In Lidome, they played a 40-game regular season schedule this year. Like last year, the standings were really close, teams 1 through 5 all one game behind one another. Gigantes were the leader, followed by Robinson Cano and Estrias Orientales. Tigres, Aguilas, Leones, and Toros were next. In the four-team, 16-game round robin, Gigantes and Estrias tied at the top, so they advanced to the championship series. And in that series, after Estrias took game one, Gigantes won four straight to claim their first Lidome title in seven years and punched their ticket to the Caribbean series. The best hitter recently has been Marcel Ozuna. He joined the team late, only playing in 21 games, but was part of a three-way tie for the league lead in home runs. In the five games of the final series, he homered three times. 30-year-old infielder Anser Alberto won the regular season batting title with a 321 average, on base 360. 34-year-old Cuban outfielder Henry Arutia, a star player in the LMB, arrived late, batting 340 in 16 games. He hit 388 in the round robin, but struggled in the final series. And another late arrival, 27-year-old infielder Kelvin Gutierrez hit 417, on base 493 in 18 games. In the final series, he led all batters with a 368 average. They were the best hitting team in Lidome, but one of the worst pitching teams. 30-year-old American lefty Tyler Alexander started seven games, ERA 275. His ERA was 104 in three starts, 17 innings in the round robin. And he threw six innings for a win in the final series. 44-year-old veteran lefty Raul Valdez joined the team for the playoffs. During the regular season with Tigres del Ice, he posted a 285 ERA in nine starts, 47 innings. Then with Gigantes, he had identical stats in the round robin and the final series. Two starts, 11 and two-thirds innings, 154 ERA, and one win in each round. In the bullpen, they've got Raymin Guduan. He posted a 165 ERA in 18 regular season appearances. In the round robin and final series combined, 14 appearances, 11 innings, no runs allowed. They've also picked up Elian Leva, the pitcher of the year from the LMP, though he struggled in his one appearance in the final series. The Dominican team has claimed the last two Caribbean Series titles, and this time they're playing at home. Gigantes won the regular season, the round robin, and the final series. They should be considered the favorites here. In the Mexican Pacific League, LMP, the 68-game regular season was split into two half-seasons. Mayos de Navajoa led the standings, followed by Naranjeros de Hermosillo. Both of those teams made quarterfinal exits. Third was a three-way tie, Algodoneros de Wasave, Charros de Jalisco, and Aguilas de Mexicali. Charles would go on to face two-time defending champion and eighth seed Tomateros de Culiacan in the final series, going a full seven games before Charros prevailed. Outfielder Felix Perez hit 11 home runs, second most in the LMP. First baseman Japet Amador hit 296, 361, 408 with eight home runs during the regular season. In the final series, their best hitter was outfielder Jose Aguilar. He hit 406, 553, 609 in 20 playoff games. Brennan Bernardino threw 23 games during the regular season, mostly in relief, ERA 353. But in the playoffs, he became a starter. Six starts, 30 and a third innings, ERA 326. In Game 7 of the final series, he threw eight innings and allowed only one, as he was named series MVP.
Alexander Tovalin is a strong arm in the bullpen. He made 37 appearances, ERA 208, and recorded 13 holds. And their closer is Roberto Osuna, 28 appearances, 126 ERA, and 11 saves. He was good in the playoffs, too. 14 games, 250 ERA, and 5 saves. But they've picked up another closer who's even better. Jake Sanchez won the MVP this year after striking out 48 batters in 32 games, 32 innings, a 169 ERA, and a league record 26 saves. Charos were not the best team during the regular season, but they got through three tough rounds in the LMP playoffs. This team knows how to win one game at a time, and that's what they'll need to do in the Caribbean series. The LVBP in Venezuela played a 49-game schedule, topped by Navagantes del Magallanes, followed by perennial powerhouse Cardenales de Lara, Leones, Tigres, and defending champions Caribes de Anzuategui. Those were the five postseason teams. In the 16-game round-robin, Caribes and Navagantes were both 10-6 and, and earned a place in the final series. For the first time in six years, Cardenales were not a part of the final series. The championship went a full seven games that just ended about ten hours ago. Navigantes won four games to three. The biggest name in their lineup is first baseman Pablo Sandoval. In 28 games this year, he hit 314, 398, 448. Nelly Rodriguez was the best hitter this year. He was the league's home run king with 14 homers in 41 games. But he's been out for a little while now, not sure if he can return for the series. Outfielder Alejandro de Aza was a 330 batter with five home runs but he struggled in the final series. As for pitching, the team ranked fourth in the LVBP and Team ERA. Their ace is Eric Lael. He started 12 games, 56 and two-thirds innings, and had the league's third best ERA. In the bullpen, they've got former San Francisco giant Anderson Franco. He joined the team late in the season. And another ex-big leaguer, Bruce Rondon, is their closer. He recorded a 147 ERA and 12 saves. They just finished, so there might be other players added to the roster in the next two days. Judging by what they have now, the team's got talent, but they'll need some help if they want to get into the championship game. And those are the six teams competing in the Caribbean series. Notice there were a lot of late additions to each team's roster. That's typical of any Caribbean series. And it's not easy to keep track of. If I missed any, be sure to mention it in the comments. The six teams will play a five-day, five-game round-robin from Friday to Tuesday. On Friday, it starts with Panama versus Puerto Rico starting at 10 a.m. In the afternoon, Colombia takes on Venezuela. And in the evening, Dominican Republic versus Mexico. Three games a day, every day, till they've all faced each other. The bottom two teams will be eliminated, and the top four will meet in the semifinals on Wednesday, February 2nd. The final game is on Thursday, February 3rd. Now for the fun part, predicting the outcome. For number six, last place, I've got Caimanes de Barranquilla. They're the right team to represent the LPB. They play well as a team. But this team, and the Colombian League as a whole, come up short in talent compared to the other five teams. That's not to say they can't win. They are capable. But I think we'll see a repeat of the last two years where they keep it close most of the time, but fail to come up with a win. Number five, Astronautas de los Santos. Playing in pro base, they have the disadvantage of playing the shortest season with the fewest teams and having too long of a break between their final series and the Caribbean series. You might also look at the standings and guess that they didn't have any competition. But that's not true. The second place team, Federalis, had a lot of talented players. But Astronautas dominated, easily the best team in Panama. But there are too many issues with their pitching to enable them to crack the top four. Number four, Navagantes del Magallanes. Now the top four here are the big four of Caribbean baseball. They could finish in any order. Any team from the LVBP should be able to beat any team from Panama or Colombia. But this definitely looks like the fourth place team. Number three, Charos de Jalisco. A good team from the LMP. Not the best, but it's really hard to say which team was the best this year. They've got some good hitters and some good pitchers, but unlike my top two picks, they are not bringing the best that their league had to offer this year. So my picks for the finals are from the same two countries I picked last year, and the same two that ended up reaching the finals. Boring picks, I know, but I can't see it going any other way. Criollos almost won this thing last year, losing to Aguilas Cibaeñas in the final game 4-1. to one. They've got a better team this year, they played more games, the league was more competitive, and they were able to grab the best pitcher and the two best hitters from the other team in the finals. Lidom's Gigantes were the best team in the regular season and the playoffs in the region's toughest league. They easily had the best hitting all year, and in the postseason added some good pitchers from around the league. On top of that, the best starting pitcher from the LMP has joined the team, and I think you'll see a positive impact from him in the Caribbean series. And they're playing at home. I'll say Gigantes to make it a Dominican three-peat. Final score, Gigantes 5, Criollos 3. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think down in the comments. That's all for this one, and until next time, this is Baseball International. See ya.